Hi, Melissa. Uh, thank you Hi. so much for accepting my invitation. How are you? I'm all right. It's Friday right now, so I'm pretty excited for the weekend. <laughs> me too, me too. Uh, okay, so let's start this podcast episode by getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, how would you describe yourself in a few words? That's a very good question. Um, I'd say I'm someone, I'm an anxious person who's always trying things even though it's going to make her more anxious. So I guess I'm someone who likes to try things, going places, discovering things, um, and then spending my time wondering why I'm doing this, because it's probably a terrible idea, uh, but having a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so as a global social media and, and international content manager, what does your day-to-day -day schedule look like? Because I assume your role is quite different than from a regular uh, social media manager, from a local social media manager. I mean, I'm sure any social media manager you've spoken to will tell you that a day to day is very, very hard to define when you're a social media manager. Um, I lead a team of four people. Um, so they're based half in Manila in the Philippines, half in the US in Kansas City. Um, and I'm on my own in Europe. So when I get up, I kind of touch base on what happened while I was asleep because everybody else was still working. Um, kind of checking in with the team um, after that, obviously checking what happened on social while I was uh, sleeping. So any sort of comments or questions we received from customers. And then from there, a lot of social listening because you need to know what's going on outside of your organization before starting your day. Um, And then I guess it's just about creating, engaging with customers and followers on social, um, catching up on projects, trying to get a little bit of brainstorm time in there because sometimes it's a bit hard, but it's always nice to be able to have conversations with people and get to create new ideas. Um, yeah, I guess my days are very different every <laughs> single day, depending on what happened while I was asleep. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Every social med media manager I talked to uh, told me the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned earlier creation. Uh, tell me, where do you find inspiration for your content strategies and campaigns? Because I can imagine it's uh, quite challenging to come up with new ideas every single time. Yeah, so our team at Zoom is... I mean, to be fair, for a social media, for a social media manager, it's nice to work at Zoom because we have a team that's quite big. So we manage content, we manage community management, we manage paid social. Um, so when it comes to creativity, I guess we kind of check on what's going on with the company as a whole. What should we be talking about today? What are the new features we want to talk about? What are the current campaigns that we're working on? And what do we want our customers to know about? Um, a lot of what we do is literally checking what questions people have for us today, because um, as you can imagine, With the pandemic, Zoom became a tool that a lot of people started using. Uh, we're having a yep. conversation on Zoom right now. And um, they came to us with a lot of questions. So a lot of the inspiration we find basically comes from customers coming to us with questions and us being like, okay, I guess this is a hot topic. I guess we should talk about it. Let's go and create some content around it to be helpful. Um, when it comes to strategy, The, the helpful is really the key for us. Uh, we don't want to create content just to create content. We want to create content that's going to be helpful, educational for our customers. And the rest of the time, it's about engaging, celebrating them. Because um, we had, we've had so much amazing content directly coming from our customers. The memes, the, the nice, you know, birthday parties that happened over Zoom. Like we, we get so much great content that we can kind of build this whole strategy around being helpful and then engaging with all the great things coming our way because it happens every single day. Yeah, I think it's amazing that you actually listen to your consumers and put their ideas into practice. <laughs> That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier the pandemic. And one of my questions for you is actually, how did the pandemic change Zoom's social media strategy? If you can think about, I don't know, budgets, communication, team cohesion, things like that. Um, well, there, there was a big difference between uh, Zoom social media before the pandemic and Zoom social media after the pandemic. I, I kind of touched on it just before, but I think the number one thing is the amount of questions and comments that came our way because we 
the amount of, of users of Zoom really exploded during the pandemic. So the number one thing for us has been volume and handling all these questions coming our way. Uh, that's how our team grew between Manila and Kansas City to, to have more people to answer all these great questions that we were receiving. And in terms of really the strategy was really like we need to focus on what these people are asking on what these people want to know we need to create all these resources for them to know about we focused on video a lot because we launched a tiktok because we realized that a lot of people were talking to uh, about us on tiktok and we were like well i guess if everybody's having conversations with us we should probably be in there and create the content so that was a big shift that um we did just joining a new channel which was very scary because i'm sure I'm sure any social media manager out there is like, I feel like we need to be on TikTok, but this is very scary. Uh, it is scary. Uh, I told you at the beginning of this podcast, I'm someone who's like always putting herself in a situation where I'm going to get even more scared doing it. But I was, that was the one of the, the, the coolest thing we've done um, after this pandemic was discovering this new channel, playing with it and having so much, so much fun. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot more uh, social media managers are starting using <laughs> TikTok uh, nowadays. Uh, so please tell me what are the most significant marketing challenges you have? Marketing challenges? I, I wouldn't know marketing challenges. I'd say social media challenges on a day-to-day basis. Um, listening, constantly listening, constantly knowing uh, what's happening because you know, a piece of content that was probably fine for the day before should be pushed away the next day. And and you need to know what's going on at all times, because as a brand, you want to make sure that you have the right message, the right tone at the right time. Um, Listening is also so crucial because you don't want to miss out on trends, on important things that you should be catching on. So I think listening, is not really a challenge, but it's something that you need to do like constantly surveying what's going on absolutely everywhere. Um, And then the second thing, again, is taking all these comments from people who are sometimes happy, sometimes not as happy, and and really making sure that you support them in the best way, Um, being transparent through, through challenges when they have it. But I think as a social media manager, it's all about keeping the pulse of what's happening that's the number one challenge because I think it is you know quote unquote easy to working with the rest of your marketing teams and creating the right content at the right time but the hard part is to always know what's going on outside of your organization and and making sure that you yeah you don't make mistakes there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um So how would you describe Zoom's social media strategy in a nutshell? Uh, well, I kind of touched on it, but I think it's it's very two pillars for us. One pillar is very much helpfulness. Like, what, what do people need right now? What are the questions that are being asked? Like, very simply, we kind of gather these questions as a social media team, and we we look at themes, like, are people asking about changing their virtual background? Is it about putting a filter on on a Zoom call? Is it about audio and video? What are these questions? And let's build the content that's going to answer these questions. So again, listening to what the follower base is is asking for uh, and creating helpful content, but also like nice and creative and not just like, you know, step-by-step instructions on how to do these things. Um, And I guess the second strategy is really engaging. So... There are so many Zoom memes, like there's about a Zoom meme a day on every channel. So for us, it's about, you know, being part of this conversation, not just watching it happen um, and and engaging also on on channels we were in before. So TikTok, again, has been incredible for us because, I mean, TikTok is so much fun and it's and it's. It's the perfect channel for for our strategy, which is educating because we can create all these videos on tips and tricks on how to use Zoom, but we can also jump on trends and and have fun with with our followers and and engage with them where they are, um, which is amazing. So I'd say our strategy is these two things, always being helpful because that's the best content, the best marketing you can ever have. And then just have fun. Having fun is is the best, the best strategy, I think. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, so because we talked a lot about content, uh, can you tell me a bit about your most successful campaigns? Campaigns, I don't know. And I, I feel like I keep talking about TikTok, but I, I think it's something we're really, really proud of this year because we launched and again, we were a little bit terrified before going because, you know, we didn't want to be one of these brands who just heard that they should be on TikTok and so they're on it, but there's not a lot of content being produced or it's all overproduced or all of that. And I I mean, we have an amazing team at Zoom, uh, an amazing team of social media managers. And I think we all kind of brainstormed as a team thinking, how do we do this? Who's getting in front of the camera? What are we what are we working on this? And and we just all jumped in really. So if you check out TikTok, it's it's just all of our social media team just making TikToks, having fun, answering questions. It's been, I think, the, the thing I'm the proudest of because we've seen great success on on creating this channel. Um, people come to us with like questions that we didn't even know we had to answer and We're creating more content out of all these conversations that are happening. We're having so much fun because obviously a lot of other people are creating TikToks about Zoom so we can go and engage there. So it's not really a campaign, but I would say the launch of a new channel has been the thing with the I'm clearly the proudest of in, in the last year. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, uh, I think at the end of the day, social media is all about fun. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Uh, what skills do you think you need to develop to be successful as a social media manager? Because I imagine there are a lot of people listening to this kind of podcast episodes who want to become social media managers, but they don't know yeah. what skills should they develop. Um, I'd say skill number one is curiosity. I think it has completely driven the way I do social media and I think it's so crucial like you cannot be a social media manager if you're just waiting for things to happen and for people to give you directions like being a social media manager is constantly reading the press reading what's trending on twitter reading checking what's going on on, on your instagram like curiosity is so 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 important on the content side of things but also on the on the social network updates side of things like every social network releases a new feature every week facebook lets you do this now twitter lets you up down downvote or upvote things like every week there's a new thing and if you're not following the trends and if you're not curious about what new things you could experiment with uh, you're going to fall off the wagon and you don't want to do that Um, so curiosity, number one, uh, I would say out of, from someone like me, who is before anything, a community manager, because I love community. That's my, the favorite part of my job. Um, I would say being transparent and honest when you speak to customers, that is so important to kind of always being in tune with, with what's going on in your organization. Like, is there a new feature at Zoom and are people going to start asking me questions? I should know about all these things and I should be able to answer questions no matter if it's a positive or a negative outcome. Um, and then the last one, I think, would be always having a plan B. So... Um, you know, if, if, I don't know, we were supposed to announce something today and then, and then we're not ready or something more important has just showed up that we should be talking about on social media today, always having a plan B so that you're not gonna wake up one morning and be like, uh oh, we don't have anything to go live with today. Um, so yeah, always be ready for a calendar shift because a calendar shift always happens and you need to be prepared for it. Definitely. Yeah, I think uh, curiosity is the skill that I've heard the most <laughs> in this kind yeah. of situations and being close to your uh, consumers is just as important. So definitely. yeah, yeah. Um, if you could teach me three things about social media management, what would you would you teach me? I would teach social listening. Absolutely crucial to me. Um, I think when you start as a social media manager, it's not necessarily the first thing that you get to learn about. I think you'd probably learn about how to post places and algorithms and when you should be posting on LinkedIn and when you should be posting on Instagram. And I think it's it's a super important thing to know about, but I think listening is when you're going to step from 
being someone who executes campaign to someone who's going to come up with ideas and and new ways to touch your audiences so i would say social listening is a major thing that you should uh, learn about a second thing would be creating the right relations relationships with the people you're going to work with so cross teams like i have a great relationship with our product team our engineering team our communications team because they are the people who I'm going to partner with when it comes to talking to our customers on social media. So I need to really be able to speak to these teams in their language and explain what we're trying to do on our social channels so that we constantly have a seamless conversation happening. Um, and I would say maybe the last bit is not being afraid of being creative. Um, I'm not a designer. I'm, I'm not a designer, but, um, you know, I learn out of watching YouTube videos, out of playing with Canva, out of doing a lot of different things. Um, and I think as a social man man media manager, having an eye for good creative and, you know, something that's going to engage with your with your follower in the feed is quite crucial. So even if you're not a creative, like I'm not a creative uh, trying to get to learn a little bit about design and what works and what doesn't so that you're going to be able to create campaigns that are really going to catch the eye of your of your followers. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, those were uh, excellent examples. Uh, so, Melissa, my last question for you would be, what are your future plans and where can people find you and follow you? Um, my future plans, I don't know, I'm pretty happy at Zoom at the moment. So you can find me at Zoom for sure. You can find us on our TikTok. I'm, I'm, I keep talking about it so that people are going to follow us. Uh, but you can, I mean, you can, you can find me on, you can find me on all my social networks that I'm sure you will plug, um, you will plug on the, on the podcast. But uh, yeah, I'm always open for questions. So if anyone want to pop in my DMs and ask questions about social media and have conversations, that's always uh, my favorite thing to do. So it's open. <laughs> great, great. Uh, well, th that was it. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa. I had fun. <laughs> it yeah, was great talking to you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.